Okay, how it comes out. Okay, so we are going to be learning about. This is very. What does noun mean in Latin? I forget again. We need to be sure about that. What does noun mean in Latin? Um, Ariel? Are you going to throw me a bone? Justine, what does noun mean in Latin? Say it the other way around. <laughs> noun means name. Okay. Good. So, Josephine, teenager, they're the same. So we can form in a positive. We have a noun that we need to know Josephine, right? Right? Correcto. However, there is another way. If I say Josephine, uh, color, is a teenager. Well, I'm doing the same thing, but now I don't have a noun that closely follows and renames Josephine in a sense. What's the verb? Now I have a sentence. What's the verb, Esther? Is it the verb? Now, would you say, though, that it's true that Josephine equals a teenager? Yes. I would, too. So, now, is, what's the infinitive of is, by the way, Andy? Uh, to is? I don't know. To is or not to is? <laughs> that is the question. To be. Remember? To be. I am, you are, he is, we are, you are, they are. So, here we have a verb, Josephine is a teenager. Josephine is um, the second daughter in her family. She's a daughter. Josephine is a uh, scholar. Josephine is an athlete. Josephine is a reader, a voracious reader. We can have any noun over here, but we actually go through, we don't, uh, we go through a verb. We have this verb in the middle, which is called a linking verb. I'm sure you've heard of that. And I like to think of linking verbs as equal signs. It really works perfectly to think of them that way. They are not action. We could say they're verbs of being and they're copulative verbs and all this, that, and the other. But you know, to, to understand the function of a linking verb, it's just an equal sign. Josephine equals teenager. So we're working with the same principle here of renaming Josephine, the same principle we use in an appositive. However, this is not a noun that closely follows and renames another noun. Josephine is a noun that follows the linking verb is, and I mean, teenager is a noun that follows the linking verb is and renames the subject, Josephine. So in this case, we call teenager not an appositive, but a predicate noun. It's a predicate noun. A predicate noun. Now, why is it called a predicate noun? But logically, we can understand this. It doesn't have to be, well, that's just what it's called. First of all, what is the predicate of a sentence? We learned this when we were studying our compound uh, subjects and verbs. The predicate is everything where? To the right. On the right-hand side of the long line, isn't it? Right? This is the complete predicate. It can include verbs, helping verbs, direct objects, if we have them. Prepositional phrases, adjectives, adverbs, the whole anything over there is the complete predicate. Everything over here is the complete subject, and that's the fundamental division of the sentence. Okay. Well, now means what in Latin? Now I forget again. What? Now means name in Latin. Sure. And in a certain sense, then, the name of a sentence is going to be the subject of a sentence because that's what you're talking about. Do you agree on it? So, in a certain sense, we could expand our, our thoughts a little bit that the noun of a sentence means the name of the sentence, which would be the main idea, the subject of the sentence, which of course would be the subject, the complete subject. And this is what the subject does, or what the action is happening to the subject, or something like that. So, any adjectives we have describing the subject, here's the subject would be over here, or, um, but in this case, we're renaming the subject of a sentence over here, in the predicate part. It's the name of the sentence, but it's over here in the predicate. So it's called a predicate noun, a predicate name, because it's only going to rename the subject. 
positives will rename any noun in the sentence. We've had uh, <coughs> the positives renaming your uh, object of a preposition to Spike Ward, a professional boxer. Sorry. But in this case, predicate nouns, they will only rename the subject. They have an exclusive contract. Do you know what that means, an exclusive contract? You'll only work for this uh, film company or for this uh, corporation, something like that. Exclusive contract with the subject. So if we have a predicate noun, when we diagram it uh, with a linking verb, it's very easy. You know, we still would have Josephine, I'll just put a capital J, is, and we'll still put is what? Is teenager. So we'll put teenager over here, but we slant the line sideways. That's why I've always said you must make your lines vertical, because a slanted line means something, and it means teenager is actually going over and renaming the subject. We have a predicate noun over here, not a direct object. Answers the same question. Josephine is what? Josephine is teenage. Right? Answers the same question. So it's a predicate noun, following the linking verb is, and renaming the subject. Um, what if I change it? I say Josephine is tall. Josephine is what? Josephine is tall. Well, I no longer have a noun, but I would still put it over here, but Josephine is tall. Now, what if I decided Josephine, and I made the positive for the subject, Josephine, a tall teenager, definitely tall is describing Josephine. It's describing this noun, it's describing the name of the sentence again, the noun of the sentence, the subject of the sentence. Usually adjectives will go right under the subject, you agree? I would put an adjective describing the subject under the subject. Makes sense, right? But in this case, I'm putting an adjective describing the subject, the name of the sentence, over in the predicate, way over on the other side of the big line. Well, I can do that, Josephine is tall. But then, it's going back over and describing the subject. We can do that, and it's called, guess what, a predicate adjective. So linking verbs link nouns that rename the subject to the subject, or they can rename adjectives that describe the subject. That's what linking verbs do. So you've heard about linking verbs, but it's very easy. Now I do not give you a list of linking verbs to memorize, because there are, hmm, maybe a percent of I'll put um, sleepy. Josephine is sleepy. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I could ch Josephine seems sleepy. Well, Josephine uh, feels sleepy today. What do feels? Feels is a good. It's a good example. Now, feels. Let's see. Oh, I feel an eraser. I've got my eyes closed. Ah, I feel the whiteboard. Okay, good. I'm in the right place. Yeah. Where's that pen? I have a feel. I, ah, I feel the pen. I feel the pen. I feel what? I feel the pen. Now, is feel an action verb or a linking verb? It's showing action, isn't it? So, uh, because pen, is pen equal to me? I feel the pen. No. No. <laughs> but... <laughs> So that's action. So the only way I can know whether it's an action verb or a linking verb <coughs> is by looking at the word that comes after it. We call it the complement that completes the meaning of complement. So that complement is not equal to the subject, so that's not a linking verb. If the complement is equal to the subject, or if the complement coming after the verb, this is a complement, is describing the subject, then we have a linking verb. That's how you know you have a linking verb. There's no other way. Memorizing all the linking verbs in the world, oh please, you know. There could be, grow can be a, he grew sleepy, as his mother read to him. He grew what? He grew sleepy. Sleepy is describing the boy, so grow is a linking verb there. But if I said he grew tomatoes in his garden, well, do tomatoes equal he? Is he a tomato? <laughs> so see, doesn't make sense. So then, grow is an action verb, he grew tomatoes. 
that's how you know. You know you have a Lincoln curve by, by looking here. I had a student, very, very bright boy, came on a private tutoring. So I gave it to him a couple of years ago in the summer, really good summer. And uh, he had taken all sorts of SAT classes and this and that. And the other one went to private school in Taiwan. But he'd only been given lists of linky verbs. And you know, it becomes very important to know linky verbs as you get into the SAT. Well, after this is the one thing you remember from the summer, there's a, why didn't anybody ever explain it that way? Because it's so easy and clear. But he'd been confused by linking verbs. He knew all sorts of advanced, advanced things. The blinking verbs had eluded him because it never was explained in this way with an equal sign. And that by looking at the complement, you know whether you have a blinking verb or not. So, very easy, really. So that's what we're learning today. We're learning to recognize them and then to speak about them. That sleepy is a predicate adjective following the blinking verb field and describing the subject Joseph. Very easy. And what I want you to know then I'm going to take a step back. If we, if we look at all the people in the world, in the whole world, and we decide, well, we need to divide them into two groups to start, we're going to start organizing things around here in the world. So we divide all the people into two. <coughs> what two groups would you divide them into, Andy? Asians and the rest. <laughs> yeah, we've got your number now. Asians and non-Asians. Yeah, that comes later. Uh, that comes later. That's certainly a valid <laughs> <laughs> distinction to make. But primarily, two groups, most fundamentally, you would divide people into what? Boy and girl. Boy and girl. Well, male and female. Okay. They might be big, they might be small. <laughs> so, male and female, right. That's the most fundamental to be male and female. If you took all the verbs in the word, now later we'd get to tall and short, young and old, and age and non uh, But if you take all the verbs in the world and divide those into two, all the verbs in the English speaking world, divide those into two, what two groups would you get most fundamentally, most basically? What would you get? Hmm. Hmm. You love this. Hmm. Charles? That's voice. That's a quality of verbs, active and passive voice. Well, some people put action verbs. Actually, that's true. We have the equal signs, and then we have action, things you can do. Kick or equal sign. Very different. Some people say, oh, helping verbs and main verbs. Yeah. Well, that's second. That comes next. Because linking verbs can have helping verbs, too. Just like, you know, Josephine is feeling sleepy, so she's sort of not enough. Um, it's been, so we can have a helping verb with linking verbs, too. So that comes second. Most fundamentally, it's linking verbs and action verbs. Yeah. Those are the two kinds of verbs in the world. So there we are. There we have it. See? Pretty easy. So we're going to practice saying them.